Hello everyone, my name is Tyler, and this week I'll be going over the Renderer tab in the Unity Particle System. Um, so for this week's video, I'm going to be using the default particle system. I've changed the main camera to be very close to the uh, particle. Um, I just changed the Z value from negative 10 to negative 2, and we'll see why I did that a little bit later on, but other than that, I haven't really done anything different. Um, so without further ado, let's begin. So the renderer basically handles how your particle is going to be drawn in Unity. It's going to basically choose which material and which texture uh, is going to be used for drawing your particles. It's going to change in which order your particles are going to be drawn in. Um, if there's going to be um, any shadows drawn in your particles, how large your particles are allowed to take up the, or how much screen space your particles are allowed to take up. Um, and basically it just handles how Unity will draw your particles. Um, so let's begin with the render mode. The default is billboard, and what that means is that your 2D texture will always be facing the camera, no matter which direction the camera is looking at your particle from. So as you can see, um, we're always going to be looking at that kind of flat 2D um, circle in the, from, whatever, from whichever direction we're looking at it. Um, so it's pretty handy for particles that are kind of going to be um, viewed from any direction. Um, so moving on to stretch billboard is um, just having your particles texture kind of stretched vertically and you can change how much it's stretched and what kind of determines how much it's stretched by um, over here using these values. You can either do it um, kind of by length, by how fast the particle is moving, or by uh, how fast the camera is moving. And um, one thing to note, or a couple things to note about the stretch billboard is that it kind of messes with your positional values and your speed values in here. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. And also, um, you're not going to be able to view your stretch particles very well from um, the top or um, bottom. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, moving on to horizontal billboards. Um, it's the same kind of idea, except your particle isn't stretched like in stretch billboard. Um, your particles are basically going to be a flat plane um, on the uh, kind of x-axis. So as you can see, you can't really view them um, when looking at it from the z-axis. So that um, these particles are basically kind of used for um, just having particles over uh, a floor, because it kind of gives the, gives the particles a nice... Um, just kind of flat feeling, so it's useful when you basically just have flat planes that you want to have particles on. Um, same kind of thing for vertical billboard, you can't view them from above or below, but you can view them from the sides. So that's handy for having particles basically flat on a wall, and um, it make, just makes them look nicer. So we're going to skip over mesh and normal direction, because that's a bit more complicated, and I'll be going over meshes in general for particle systems in a later video. Um, so we'll go over that at that time, but let me just change it back to billboard and then we'll move on. So materials are basically determining um, which texture and which shaders are going to be applied to that texture um, for your particles. So right now we have the default particle. I have set up another material um, off screen that we can kind of see um, what kind of effects are going to be shown using a different material. Um, I'm going to also be covering materials in a later video because there's quite a few uh, shaders that you can use for your textures, and I'll want to go over those a little bit in more detail, but I don't have time for it in this video. But as you can see right off the bat, um, instead of the kind of pale um, circle that we had before, we kind of have this glowing like orange ball um, as a 2D texture instead. So um, materials and textures are a large part of your um, particle systems, so um, it's, it's a very good idea to kind of spend a lot of time in making the texture look right, and then um, getting the right like channels in it and stuff like that. And I'll be making uh, videos probably far into the future about um, kind of how you, how to do that um, using Photoshop or GIMP or something. So let's uh, set it back to the default particle texture or material and then uh, move on. So for determining which order in which your particles are drawn in, um, you can use the sorting mode or sorting fudge. Sorting mode, you can have your particles kind of drawn um, in front of each other based on distance, where the closest one to the camel will be drawn first, and then the second closest, and so on. Um, you can also have it based on the particle's lifetime, where the youngest particles will be drawn first, or the oldest particles will be drawn first. Um, 
if you have kind of a hierarchical particle system and you know um, kind of precisely which particles you want to have drawn in front of other ones, you can use the sorting fudge. Or if you change this number here, uh, here, the particles with the lower number will be drawn in front of the particles with higher numbers. So if you have like a parent and child system and you want the parent to always be drawn in front of the child, you can set the parent sorting fudge to zero and the child sorting fudge to one. I wouldn't use it on particle systems, uh, different particle systems in the same scene, just because you have to make sure that the sorting fudge is kind of consistent across all scenes. Um, I would just use the sorting mode, uh, the sort mode, in that instance, um, because it can get pretty confusing. So next is uh, shadows. Um, basically, these are just checks boxes to see whether your particles are going to cast shadows or receive shadows. One thing to note is that if you're using shaders that allow um, any kind of transparency, you won't be able to have your particles cast or receive shadows, as um, Unity does require that you need opaque materials in order to cast shadows. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, Next and last is the max particle size, and this basically means um, like how much screen space your particle is allowed to take up in Unity. Um, so right now it's 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 at a range from zero to one, where it's, where it's kind of like a percentage system almost, where uh, the 0.5 right now is kind of 50%. So the particle is allowed to take up about half the screen space before it's kind of uh, limited in its size and it can't go uh, any bigger than that. So if we press play. And then uh, this is our camera right now and what it kind of sees. So each particle is kind of limited in um, how large it can grow. So if we change the particle size, as an example, to something a little bit ridiculous like 15, as you can see, the camera isn't really going to be able to see much but white. But if we play it, the particle's still only limited to about half the screen. And that's because the renderer says the particle can't get bigger than um, half the screen size. So that's something interesting. If we change it to 1 or the entire screen, we'll be able to see what kind of effect that has. So now the particles are basically able to take up the entire uh, screen space. So um, that's something that you want to keep in mind if you're using uh, particles that are going to be taking up your entire screen and you're okay with that. Just make sure to set the max particle size down here and not be confused by the sizes that you set in here. So that's about it for renderers. Um, I'm going to be um, going over the rotation over lifetime and rotation by speed next week. If I went too fast or if I was too confusing, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer any questions that any of you might have. But um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.